So there's, there's actually several different models for uh, crowdfunding. And one way you can sort of think about crowdfunding is, in some senses, what is the person who's providing financial resources getting back? Um, so you have almost as many different types of crowdfunding as you have different types of financial assets. So there's equity crowdfunding, probably one of the leaders in that space is a company called Circle Up. Uh, at least within the United States. E equity crowdfunding has been more popular, particularly in the United Kingdom and in Australia. Um, there's debt crowdfunding. Uh, so if you think about a company like Prosper.com, which actually a lot of people now have heard about, you can do small loans. Those could be small personal loans, but some people are using those um, as a, like a small business loan. Um, then, of course, the you know kind of the big ones are probably Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Uh, and a lot of those are rewards-based. Uh, and the way that entrepreneurs use them a lot is essentially as a form of doing pre-sales. So they have an idea for a product or a service, they'll try to sell it before they've even made it, uh, and then the reward that you get as part of that by, by buying in uh, is getting one of the first um, you know, instances or one of the first versions of the product made. Um, and then there's also sort of pure uh, charity sites. and. Uh, uh, that don't promise anything in return other than, you know, sort of feeling good for uh, getting some sort of charitable donation going. If we sort of look on a worldwide scale, uh, you know, it's probably on the order of six billion over the last year, um, which sounds like a lot of money until you realize that um, you know, some of the spaces that these are playing in are, you know, spaces that are literally tens of billions or hundreds of billions. So if we think about the debt market, right, so with like Prosper.com, I mean, we have hundreds if not of billions, if not trillions of dollars of, you know, kind of new loans being written every year. So being a, you know, a few billion dollars is actually just being a minuscule part of that market. Uh, so it's, it's, it's best to think that it's really small in most areas that it's providing funding. It's probably, you know, at most one, one and a half percent of uh, what's going on. But what's exciting about it is that it's growing incredibly fast. A lot of these subparts of uh, crowdfunding are growing in excess of 100 percent a year. So if we sort of project out a few years, uh, it could easily become a, you know, a pretty important piece of uh, some of these areas. The whole idea behind crowdfunding is that we sort of move away from, you know, kind of a small, you know, uh, group of, of investors like venture capitalists or you know, large angel investors who are investing, you know, big chunks of money, maybe writing a check for, you know, one or two million dollars or, you know, five million or ten million. Uh, and really uh, going down to individuals who might only be putting in $100 or $50 each. Um, certainly that's uh, uh, what's happening on Kickstarter, is if you look at the really successful Kickstarter campaigns, they have thousands and thousands of people who are you know, pre-purchasing the product that are helping to get the uh, company going. And those aren't professional investors, those are just people who are interested in you know, maybe something new like the Pebble Watch or some other you know, kind of product that they find interesting. Um, it's a little bit different in the equity investing space because until this January, uh, the SEC was limiting equity investments to qualified investors. So in that sense, the equity crowdfunding space within the U.S. looked a lot like the uh, angel investors. It was essentially the same people. This was just a new kind of way for them to uh, put funds into a company. But as of January, the SEC sort of relaxed those, uh, the restrictions on who could invest in uh, companies, which means that uh, it'll be easier for almost anyone who might like to invest a little bit of money in a startup to, to do so. So the entrepreneur anywhere that has a good idea uh, can potentially get access to customers, get access to capital. Um, there's another aspect of that kind of expanded act, which is, which is that, you know, if you look at who venture capitalists are, you know, they're by and large, you know, white men who went to elite institutions. Um, and that's its own type of constraint in the sense that, you know, they're mostly searching for investments through their networks and they're mostly networked to people that look a lot like them. Um, so one of the other, I think, exciting aspects of crowdfunding is it promises to, you know, make capital available to anyone regardless of what their background is uh, if they have a good idea. 
Um, the second thing that I think is really different about crowdfunding and exciting for a potential entrepreneur is that uh, if you look at things like Kickstarter and Indiegogo, they can solve a problem that entrepreneurs usually have in a different way. So it's not just about access to capital. Uh, one of the really tricky problems for an entrepreneur is, you know, I have a new product or I have a new idea, but how do I decide, you know, how much demand there's going to be for that product, what price people are willing to pay. And the cool thing about these sort of um, uh, donation websites or the things like Kickstarter is that you can put a product out there before you've actually made it. You can get a sense of what people are willing to pay based on whether or not they're going to um, contribute to the campaign at a particular price level, uh, all before you've spent any money actually designing or or um, or you know producing the product, creating an inventory. So that takes a lot of the risk, uh, particularly the market risk. Uh, out of new ventures, uh, and I think that's a really interesting development for, for lots of entrepreneurs. If you look at venture capital, you know, it's primarily in San Francisco, Boston, uh, New York. There's like, some other small places like Austin, Texas that have, you know, little concentrations of venture capital. But if you looked at a map of where crowdfunding campaigns are, so if I just were to map, say, the Kickstarter campaigns, you'd see really there are campaigns almost everywhere that there are people in the United States. And so uh, it's, it's a much different sort of geography. It's much more um, widespread than you see in the venture capital industry. There's been a little bit of research, both in Kickstarter and on an interesting platform called Celeband, uh, looking, which is based in the Netherlands, looking at uh, the sort of the geography of the people funding crowdfunding campaigns, uh, and particularly the relationship between the people that are doing the funding and the people that are doing, in some sense, the selling. Uh, and one of the things that uh, that research has found is that the early funders are very much local. So if you are uh, based in New Haven uh, running a campaign, it's quite likely that the early people that are contributing to that campaign are going to be also from New Haven. Not surprisingly, you know, family, friends, other contacts. I don't think it's a fad. Uh, I do think that um, there's, there's a question of whether it will live up to the sort of uh, amount of enthusiasm that people have for it. I think it's likely to really become a, uh, an element in entrepreneurial finance on a regular basis. I think the big question is whether this is something that will be, you know, two or five percent of the sort of entrepreneurial finance market or if it's going to be something that's 50% of it. Um, I think there are certain types of, you know, kind of venture capital or angel investments that it will never replace. Um, but there's a big sort of um, you know, range of investments in terms of the size of investments and types of investments where you could sort of imagine uh, either group of funders potentially uh, backing companies. Uh, and so what the you know, kind of eventual status of crowdfunding is I think really depends on uh, which becomes more popular, which be seems to become the preferred solution for entrepreneurs. If you looked at the, you know, sort of the range of things, say, that are getting funded through um, Kickstarter or even through, um, you know, something like Circle Up, I would say it's a subset of the types of investments that a venture capitalist would, made, would make. And it seems like the types of things that really are consumer facing uh, are easier to do through a crowdfunding campaign uh, than things that say, you know, might be, might have a business as the primary customer.